As usual, hello everyone once again. Yay! A little old me with another bout of craziness to share. Well, this time it's an attempt to throw down the crazy a little actually, you know, by explaining a bit of the perspective behind my philosophy. Namely, how the heck is it possible to believe in being in other kin in the first place? Naturally, my fo focus is on draconity, but this can apply to the other breeds out there easily enough. You see, draconity and other kin in general is a belief tied in with the level of the soul. It has nothing to do with whether a particular being could, or even once did, exist physically. You know, personally, that sort of topic to 3 o'clock a.m. bullshit sessions at Denny's. You know, right up there with, what would be the ultimate mech, or what would we do with superpowers? Whoosh! Instead, this is a belief that ties in with ideas of the spiritual levels of existence. You know, things like astral travel, spirit planes, spiritual beings, and all that stuff. Maybe I'd better start at the beginning. The physical world that we see and interact with is just one layer of our reality cake. There are other levels of existence that, well, exist as different kinds of energy. Think in terms of words like the astral, spirit planes, heck, you could even look at it in terms of heaven and hell, which to me are just reflections of places with high and low vibration. My focus is on the astral and spirit planes, levels of looser reality where energy and will form a much larger part of how things work. You know, up there is where beings typically hang out in between physical incarnations. You know, some people don't spend long up there, jumping back to a new life right away. Well, others, of course, spend longer periods, right up to only reincarnating, you know, a handful of times over, well, centuries, I guess. Now remember, that up there, things run on energy and consciousness first. Energy itself is formless. Like water shaping the cup that holds it, the soul can shape to the qualities, desires, strengths, and weaknesses of the consciousness behind it. That said, you know, the typical astral sojourner looks how you might expect. You know, a person wants to be familiar with themselves after all, right? There are some variations, of course. You know, for example, some people who have been around the mud ball a few times and grown or enlightened can appear more like bodies of light or more formless, like wisps of cloud-like energy. You know, others can be really rigidly dead set on holding on to their past experiences in physical life. And they tend to look pretty much how they did when they were alive. For obvious reasons, they don't want to let go. To make a long story short, people tend to appear how they truly see themselves. You know, this is why people who feel a strong, intrinsic link with the qualities of other beings can take on aspects of them. As a quick interjection, I want to emphasize that this takes a much deeper kinship than simply liking a particular image or animal. It goes as deeply as having these qualities within your very spiritual nature. You know, the core of what makes you, well, you. Being that it has such a deep connection, it blurs the lines between whether this is a choice or not. You know, I like to think that if a person is being genuine and honest with himself, or herself, of course, then it's a recognition of something that's inside of you, which makes it beyond choice. Of course, being in between lives may not be a choice, but recognize it and acting on that recognition while running around down here is, and one that should not be taken lightly or treated as a game. Now then, while that might allow for your run-of-the-mill wacko, you know, prancing around in furry underwear and floppy stuffed tails, you know, there's still the matter of us really weird ones who recognize an inner animal that isn't typically seen around these parts. You know... Of course, I'm finally getting to draconity, griffins, phoenixes, and other unusual critters. Not that all beings who exist decide to come down to reality on a regular basis in the first place. Or any basis at all, really. Among them, they're typically content to follow their shenanigans up there where they learn and grow and experience that softer form of reality. These things... And these beings I consider to be innately spiritually focused. As they learn and grow, yes, they have to earn it too, just like us. You know, They tend to fall into roles of guides and protectors, you know, guardian angels and that sort of thing. Though, of course, just like with people, some are more aligned with the light than others. 
So anyone wanting to try and meet these things, remember to use your head and think very carefully on what exactly you want and why. Anyways, getting back on topic here. Astral beings have young and old souls just like us, and on occasion one might pop down here to learn something, or, of course, to teach something. However, where the forms of dragons and such are easy on the astral, you know, physical reality is a little less forgiving in the appearance department. It has to work too, you know. So, thanks to the malleability of soul, remember that it's energy? You know, they're born and live in the same manner as any, anyone else. Well, personality quirks aside, anyways. Yeah, but I suppose it's about time I got to the point of how all this is supposed to relate to me. Well, you see, I consider myself a half-breed. You know, just kind of somewhere in between being a dragon and being a person. As such, I guess there could be, you know, three popular explanations, depending on who you ask, you know. First, I'm a part of some funky astral race that doesn't get noticed much, let alone, you know, actually pop down for incarnation, and I'm the black sheep. I don't know. Or, of course, I'm an ordinary, old, average being who formed an intrinsic link with dragons. Or, of course, a couple of beans up there got together for a little more than beers. You know, the dirty dragon ditty had to be inspired somehow, right? But joking aside, I need to be honest and say that I don't know how I am what I am. I can't ever really find a memory of not being a draconic, nor can I discover a memory of any sort of beginning. I just am. To me, that's what matters as well as having reason to believe it's possible. My soul did what every soul does, and took an image that reflects my nature. If there's a story behind it, well, it was already written, and I guess I'll just get to see the pages open to me as they will. Uh, in the meantime, folks, once again, that's all. I hope you found this, you know, mildly entertaining and slightly more informative. In the meantime... I shall talk to you all later. Have a good one.